teaching music today, whether in a classroom or a one-on-one -on -one instruction at a studio, or even today on an online format uh, via the internet, is a huge responsibility for the instructor. We're not only communicating a new language to the student, we're communicating a way of expressing ourselves, a different way of creating emotion from within ourselves, giving to somebody else. And that's a big job. We also have to communicate the magic because music is a powerful entity. And so we're teaching the language skills, but also the life skills, the meaning of music. And that's a powerful tool to communicate. For my private students, I have a, a studio here at my home. Um, as you can see, it's, it's fully equipped. It's, uh, it's very organized. Uh, in my piano teaching, I have a full-scale digital piano, uh, as well as in my vocal coaching, uh, I play for my students. And, um, and they have uh, plenty of room to, to work. It's a very positive environment and a very very good space to create and learn. Uh, in my private studio, I also have a pretty, pretty complete library of both vocal repertoire and piano repertoire for all levels of study. So within that library, I have uh, very classical pieces, uh, both piano and vocal, as well as uh, lighter pieces. And there's several different ways to get a student to uh, embrace a technique. Uh, it's not always the classical approach. You can have a classical technique with a lighter song. It's important as the teacher to mix it up a little bit. Every student has a unique learning style. And as an instructor, you have to embrace their individuality. There are no presets to teaching music. There's simply a right way and a wrong way. And the student will help you as the instructor know how they need to learn. Some students work well with visual learning, some need to have this tactile sense of touch, and others are verbal or they work better with words and how you communicate. Um, that's really important. You must learn the learning style of your student to be an effective teacher. And you have to talk to them and find out what they're good at, what their interests are. How are you going to open that, that avenue up for them to learn music and be passionate about it? No matter what the instrument is, or no matter what the discipline is, you have to be very aware as the instructor as to what they need. And so you have to listen. A good teacher is also a good listener. You make your students laugh. Have them enjoy the time with you. I think if they like you as the teacher, if they generally like the person they're working with, uh, they're going to be more motivated to attend the lesson prepared. And they're not going to dread it. They're going to they're going to say, oh, I like Mr. or Mrs. I like Miss. I, I like them. I enjoy my time with them. I'm motivated to learn. And that's important. I can't think of any other activity um, in life that you can enjoy and learn from when you're four years old or 94 years old. I've had the pleasure of working with both of those demographics. And I can't see a difference in either one. The joy and the power of music that brings life to these individuals is true at a very young age and is true at an older age. Learning is a process, but so is teaching. Uh, we're going to have our good days and our bad days on both sides. So the more we come into the lesson with enthusiasm and passion, uh, it'll work through those tough days. No matter what kind of day we're having, we can still promote the joy of teaching, the joy of learning. Uh, and in the arts, there's always a way to find that joy. That's what's unique about learning the arts. It's not just knowledge, it's a humanistic passion that, that comes from the teacher. And if we can infuse the student with that passion, uh, we've done a great job.